Well, I think he's going to do a little bit like what Tim Geithner, his predecessor, that used to do. That went down well. Didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It didn't really go down very well. <laughs> Uh, and I think it's very limited what the prodding of the European officials can become, come, can achieve from from the the new U.S. Um, Trade Secretary, uh, U.S. Uh, um, Treasury Secretary. But the important thing is that they is, uh, they are establishing relationships, and I think that's probably what this trip's all about. It's about establishing relationships, and he's going to meet with. Uh, we saw Barroso there, Herman Van Rompuy, and Monetary Affairs Commissioner Olli Rehn as well. Then he's heading off to Frankfurt, and he'll talk to ECB President uh, Mario Draghi, and he'll also take in uh, Berlin with a meeting uh, with Wolfgang Schäuble. So he's certainly hitting all of the key people in this in in, in, yeah, in I, Europe at I this do, stage. Do you not find it slightly fascinating that he's basically giving half an hour to all the people in Brussels? then he's off to, to sort of talk to the serious people in, in Germany. <laughs> That's why I'm moving like, to Berlin. Yes. Uh, <laughs> not to Brussels. Yes. Not to Brussels because the political power is in Berlin. But, you know, we've seen a lot of people trying to prod Berlin into doing more when it comes to, pro to, to uh, stimulating growth. And we haven't seen any response, and, and I think it very, it's going to be very unlikely we see any sort of response from, from Germany as well, particularly in a, an hold, election year in terms of stimulating the economy. I mean, they've spending. kind of backed off, right, in terms of deficit targets for certain peripheral countries. So we, we have, you know, there's austerity, but Germany is certainly on board to, to relaxing a bit. Uh, they, they are, and we'll probably see that at the meeting at the end of this week in Dublin when the finance ministers meet. But it's true that they're backing off on the on the targets but they're and this is something we've heard from the European Commission they're talking more about the need to actually achieve structural budget deficit targets rather than actual budget deficit targets because every time a country contracts mm. that makes it more difficult to actually achieve you know, to, to look after that so they want to make sure happy. that structurally people are on the are, are on the right track and that's going to be the key thing for Portugal Portugal can't renegotiate its bailout uh, and and come up with a different um, a different sort of plan, if you like. They need to stick with their plan. That's what the, Indo the European Commission's indicated. It's going to be... I, we're, we're in a process now of, of trying to figure out what happens next. And I have to say that I'm slightly sort of... We've got the ECB in the mix. We're trying to work out what it's going to do next. We've got the sort of the, the austerity story on the periphery of Europe. Portugal's just the latest case in point. We're trying to understand exactly kind of what the next leg is. I kind of feel we're in we're in limbo at the moment. We, we, there's a whole series of things happening. The data's getting worse, but we we don't have a coordinated response. Do you, any sense that we're going to sort of start to get more? Well, hints this is about one of the big criticisms, isn't it, that the European response has not been coordinated? We saw that with the Cyprus bailout. It certainly yeah. wasn't coordinated, and the whole thing blew up in their We still faces. don't understand what the bank is going to look like. But I do think what is like. interesting is what Mario Draghi started to talk about. Uh, at the meeting last week, the European Central Bank meeting last week, and I wonder if indeed Financial Times has got an editorial about it, about the need for more creative thinking coming from the European Central Bank. Because the big issue yeah. here, you know, monetary transmission, yes, it's not working, but how do you get uh, smaller companies, SMEs in the, uh, in the peripheral states to actually see their borrowing costs coming down and what can actually be done. One of the suggestions I thought was interesting in the FT this morning was that perhaps a European Central Bank could start buying securitised loans of these SMEs. But then that would put the risk onto the EC balance sheet, which brings in the, the role of the government. <laughs> Not the role of governments and yeah. maybe more flexible use of the ESM to actually, get, uh, actually stand behind the potential liabilities from uh, taking on those sorts of loans onto the ECB balance sheet. There's lots that can be done. David, just a matter of doing 